So reverse shoulder replacement is a, a type of shoulder replacement that we use um, in patients who have major rotator cuff tears, fractures, um, previously failed shoulder surgery, um, bad deformities. Um, this is something that um, is a very good option now for patients who have had multiple surgeries before for rotated cuff tears, but the tear never healed and they're still having a lot of pain with limited function. I would say that it's been one of the most significant advancements in shoulder surgery over the past few decades. Uh, it, reverse shoulders have revolutionized shoulder surgery because they're an option now for patients who literally had no option before. I mean, before the advent of reverse arthroplasty, there were a lot of patients who had these um, problems and we would just tell them that we don't really have a good solution for them. The reason why it's called a reverse replacement is because whereas in a normal shoulder the socket is on this side and the ball is on this side we reverse it. So the socket is now on the side of the humerus bone and the ball is on the side of the glenoid and so it literally looks like everything's been reversed and the reason why that's significant is because it allows the it allows the two to couple together and you can lift up your arm now with other muscles that would substitute for the rotator cuff tendon so normally the rotator cuff is up here and it allows to lift up the arm in patients who have no rotator cuff left when they try to lift up their arm it literally slides up and they can't really move their arm up because there's no rotator cuff up here so their arm slides up. When you put a reverse in and you couple these, other normal muscles up here will now lift up the arm because this joins the two together and then they have a fulcrum and then the arm moves up. And so basically it's a good option for patients who have bad rotator cuff tears. We also have now used it for severe fractures, for patients who have had previous shoulder replacement and they might have an infection or a failure of a prior implant. It's a really good option for those patients. We do a lot of these even on an outpatient basis in younger and healthy patients who we can send home the same day. Uh, patients who are older or have comorbidities we generally do in the hospital but even with that it's generally just an overnight stay in the hospital. Patients wear a sling on their arm for four weeks post-surgery. Um, there's a fair amount of physical therapy involved. Generally, patients go to outpatient therapy a couple of times a week, and the average recovery time is about three to six months. Most patients are in rehab for about three months. Some patients are in rehab for up to six months, and the improvement, the gradual improvement back to relatively normal function generally takes about three to six months, but can take up to a year. Um, there's not severe pain associated with this procedure. I found that most patients now, there's a lot of variability in pain, of course, but most patients are off narcotic pain medicine in less than two weeks. Uh, and we encourage patients after two weeks to just take over-the-counter anti-inflammatories. Um, and it's, it's basically revolutionized shoulder surgery and it's something that I do very frequently in my practice. I've had patients go back to horseback riding. I've had patients go back to hunting. Um, I have a lot of golfers. Um, I let patients return to golf generally three months post-surgery um, and uh, outcomes are generally very good. In my opinion, surgeons who do reverse arthroplasty should be the ones who do a lot of them. I mean, you know, multiple studies have shown that when it comes to joint replacement, you want to go to somebody who does a lot of joint replacements and not just a few every year. And you'll get a better outcome. And that's the, and that, and that, I think that would be, that should be the way it is for almost any surgical procedure.